Welcome to Formarte English Academy. Okay, we're going to start today our unit number four. So uh, please turn on your booklet on page 28 and let's start right away. Okay, as uh, we see uh, today's um, unit name is um, just a moment. Acting on Advice. But uh, before starting today's unit, I recommend for you to do uh, in your house as homework, please uh, do the exam folder number two. In that part, we're going to practice. Uh, remember that we have already seen part number two of the uh, reading and use of English test when they give us a text and with some gaps. And based on our grammar knowledge, then we need to uh, just fill out the, the gaps. We, we saw that already in, uh, in uh, the last units, but it's very good to practice. So uh, please uh, read it. Uh, you can go to page 26 and uh, please read uh, the advice, the, the tips that they give you, or they give you more tips. We have already seen some tips, but they give you here more tips. And uh, there's a real practice afterwards. So uh, please do it. And of course, we will be giving you the answers for this. And uh, very important, some advice here, exam advice that will help you a lot for this part of the test, okay? Well, let's start our unit today, which is acting on advice, which is unit number four. And uh, we're going to start with some listening today. Uh, again, remember, we're going to be sending you those listening uh, uh, audios on the, uh, on the WhatsApp so that you can be able to uh, check them out and also save them in your computer. And uh, also, if you want to keep on listening to them all the week, you can also do it. So uh, again, we're not going to practice uh, a test part uh, for listening, but it's very important for you to keep practicing and listening to a British accent. Um, later on in some other units, we're going to see some specific listening parts for the test. But um, for now, again, we, uh, we're just going to practice some listening. And for example, uh, it says here, have you ever been in situations like the ones in the photos? What happened? What problems do you have? That's like a little bit of speaking. So you can maybe answer that question. And uh, part two, it says, listen to some given instructions. In what situation will you expect to hear them? So based on what you listen, then based on the, on the pictures, then you're going to answer those questions. Also, part four, sorry, part three says, look at the examples from listening, which grammatical structures are used. So uh, please uh, read that information. Remember, we're going to send you all these uh, in the platform, you can see all the answers for these parts. Number four says, listen again and note down similar examples that are used to give instructions. Which structure sounds more direct? Which structure sounds more polite? Okay, so this is good for you to uh, make a difference between polite and also, uh, sorry, in this case, some uh, direct and more polite parts regarding of the accents of uh, the people. Then uh, we can just work uh, with these different questions and based also on the uh, listening you can answer these questions and uh, if you want to pause for a moment the video so you can do this listen to the uh, the audio and uh, practice a little bit of listening you can do it so you can pause it right now okay uh, once we have done this listening part uh, I will also like for you to practice a little bit of reading. Remember, in the last uh, lesson, lesson number three, we practice uh, part five of the reading and use of English test where they give you a big text. And based on that text, you need to try to find out or answer the questions in the, in the, what well, is just basically reading comprehension. But remember that there is some specific parts that they're going to ask you. So that's what you're going to uh, to choose, right? But in general, this unit, uh, before going through the uh, part of the test for today, uh, in general, this unit also helps us a little bit with reading. 
So uh, there is a text here where it says, what is the best way to give advice? And uh, also there's a reading part that says here, work with a partner and discuss these questions. Okay, so uh, please discuss those questions, answer the questions based on, on the text. Also, well, it says work with a partner, but you can do it by yourself. Uh, it says, uh, take the topics that, that you will expect to read about in an article. And um, it says here, uh, and also call what is the best way to give advice. So maybe just based on the text, try to answer those questions. And uh, there's also some other questions to discuss. This is again, uh, because what Cambridge really wants is for you to really get the uh, specifics of the text. So in this case, they give you a text and they answer some specific questions. That is for us to help us once we're gonna be doing the test, for example, like part five, that is a, uh, that is a reading comprehension part, that we can be able to find out those details that Cambridge wants for us to have. Okay, so those are just different examples that are going to help us regarding reading. But let's go right away to our part of the test. And um, we're going to practice part three of the uh, reading and use of English test. And uh, it's called war formation. So what is it about? Let me tell you in a moment. Uh, it says, in this part of the reading and use of English, paper, you, you are giving a short text with eight gaps and an example. At the end of some of the lines, there is a word in capitals, which you will need to change so that it will make sense when it is put in the gap, in the same line. In the example below, you're giving uh, the verb arrive, and it needs to be changed into the noun arrival in order to, for the sentence to make sense. And this is the example, it says, uh, the planes late, there's a gap, and they will show you here uh, this uh, uh, word, arrive, was due to a thunderstorm during the flight. So remember, in this part, they will give you the root of the word, and you will need to change the word into a noun, into a verb, into an adjective, or into an adverb. So that's uh, the way uh, that you will need to work on. And there's a lot of ways to change uh, words into verbs or into a noun or an adjective just by adding suffixes or prefixes, okay? So that's uh, like the thing or the most important thing that we need to learn in this part. But, um, so again, the example, yeah, the plane's late arrival, right? So. In this case, they give you a verb, arrive, and you need to change it into a noun, arrival, okay? So uh, it says you need to read the sentence carefully to decide what kind of word is missing. Is it a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb? In English, we often use prefixes, letters that go in front of a word, or suffixes, letters that go at the end of the word, to change the type of word it is. So, uh, Please take out a, 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 your a notebook and, uh, and pencil because I would really want for you to work on this, uh, uh, I mean, the way to use these prefixes or suffixes to change it into a noun or to change it into an adverb or to change it into a verb. This is very important for this part. Before that, let me uh, please uh, look at how this part looks like. This is exactly how it looks like in, uh, let me just uh, change the screen. Okay, this is the way that how the uh, test is going to look like, this part, part three of the reading and use of English test. So as you can see, they give you a text, you're gonna see eight different gaps, and for each of these uh, gaps, they will, they're gonna give you a word, and, and uh, based on that word, based on the sentence, uh, you need to change that word using uh, the same root. For example, here it says in, in 1538, the, and they give you published, right? So in this case, it's the publication of a word map show Northern South America. So uh, I'm not going to give you the answers because I would like, once we finish this unit, 
I would like for you to go back on, on this video and I would like for you to do this part because this is exactly how it looks like in the test. So um, do this and of course we are going to send you uh, the, um, uh, the answers for this part. But let's uh, go very quick to the, uh, let me explain very quick how uh, this works, okay? Well, let's go with uh, prefixes, okay? So the following prefixes all give the meaning of not when they come before a word, right? We have ill, ir, in, on, dis, im, and miss. So we often, but not always, put ill before words beginning with, with L. I are before words beginning with R, and I am, uh, before words beginning with M and P. So um, that's the thing that I would like for you to do today and for us to practice together. So it says, which prefix do we use to make these words negative? So uh, for example, we have satisfied, we have patient, expensive, legal, possible, comfortable, honest, happy, responsible, understand, appear, regular, or moral. So which of them? So please write them down and uh, uh, you can pause the video and remember the answers. I'm going to send you these answers uh, in, uh, in your platform so that you can also look at this part, okay? So um, which uh, prefix six? You can pause the video and do it. Okay, now let's go to part two. It says, what meaning do you think these prefixes give to the word that follows? Can you think of some more examples? So nonstop, retrain, subway, untie, underline. So think of some other examples to see if you can do this part. Okay, uh, now let's go with suffixes. Okay, how do we change words into nouns? Okay, because if there's a, a word, well, for example, happy. Well, happy is an adjective. How can I change it into a noun? Well, we add happiness, right? So uh, for these suffixes, Asian, ion, mass, ship, it, ism, and man, or all, right? For example, intelligent, intelligence, right? Well, I don't want to give you more answers. Please do this part right now in your notebook and. Uh, in a moment, I will give you all the answers, okay? Well, I will uh, send you the answers in the platform so that you can check them all. Okay, part number four, it says, not all nouns follow the above pattern. Make nouns from these words. Let's see if you can try to uh, use some, su some suffixes. What would be the way to change these words into nouns? be true, succeed, die, and high. Okay, now that you have done that, let's go with adjectives, okay? So typical adjectives, suffixes are, say, if I want to change a word into an adjective, what suffixes should I use? Well, a lot of them are able, able, I, sorry, why, all, if, fool, less, or us. For example, uh, wind. Well, how can I change? Well, wind is a, a noun. How can I change it into an adjective? Very easy, right? Windy. So, uh, and it will be the same thing with all of them. Attract, hope, danger, and accident, value, or access. So which of those adjectives, I'm sorry, which of those suffixes will you add in these words? I can, again, you can pause the video and do it. In, and I can give you time and uh, you can check the answers on your platform. Okay, number six, adverbs, okay? So adverbs are usually formed by adding the suffix ly to the adjective. Be careful with spelling, okay? For example, complete, completely, temporary, temporarily, real, really, reasonable, reasonably, lucky, and luckily. And there are some exceptions. For example, true, uh, truly, not truly, right, with the e, or shy, shyly, not shyly, with an i. And adjectives ending in IC usually add ally, okay? For example, basic, basically, okay? So uh, that's something very, very important for us to underline and for you to write down on your notebook, okay? 
let's go, uh, well, it says make these words into adverbs. So again, I can give you a little bit of time. You can pause the video so that you can uh, change those uh, adverbs, I'm sorry, those words into adverbs. You can pause the video. Okay, and uh, the last part here is verbs, okay? It is less common in part three of the reading and use of English paper to have to form a verb. However, you may be asked to make changes to a verb by using a prefix such as un, dis, or re, or to make a noun or an adjective into a verb by using the prefix dis or re. So for example, uh, it says change the words using un, dis, or re. I can give you a, a little bit of a, uh, a clue here. For example, new. Okay, new is an adjective. How can I change an adjective new into a verb? Well, we just add renew. Okay, so that's an example. So uh, please uh, do courage, do build, pay, approve, and lodge. How will you change those words using on, this, or re? Again, you can pause the video. And I can uh, give you time for you to do this part. Okay, and uh, it is more likely that you will need to change a verb into a noun or adjective. Change these verbs to nouns. I can give you time again. Okay, and uh, it says here, read through the text on the right and think about what kind of words you need to make. For example, uh, publication, the one that the the, uh, in the text that I was showing you in just uh, briefly. And of course, list the parts from of speech from gaps one to eight and then complete the task. So once you have done this task, well, the ones that we have been practicing right now, please, I would like, I would like for you to do this, uh, this uh, exercise because it's going to help you a lot. This is exactly how uh, we see it in our uh, test. So again, I can give you some time and we'll be, you will find all the answers in the platform for this part. So pause a little bit the video for a moment and do this part. Okay, once you have finished this part, then um, we can go back to our booklet and you, you will see that uh, today's grammar part is going to be about models and semi-models. Uh, well, we normally know the basic of everything, yeah, should, can, ability, and so on, right? But there is a lot about these uh, models and semi-models, and there's a lot of ways that we can use them. And that's what I want for us to see today. So uh, again, please open uh, or yeah, open your notebook and uh, Please start writing uh, whatever you see that is important for you, whatever that is going to help you. Please uh, write it down. And uh, you have this week, week number four, to study models and semi-models. Please grab the whole week to study. Don't, uh, I don't want for you to watch all these videos uh, all in one month, no. Remember, this course is for four months and one week each. So we give you that space of a week or that week so that you can study and have the time to review the lesson. If you want to watch it again, you can also watch again the same lesson during that week. So in week four, uh, please dedicate this week four uh, studying models and semi-models, okay? But let's start right away. <clears throat> Sorry. So, um, in this case, as um, model and semi models, verbs give an indication of a speaker's attitude and of the relationship between the speaker and the listener. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is ability. Okay, uh, well, we know, sorry, sorry, give me a moment here. Okay, can expresses ability in the present could expresses general ability in the past. That's very easy, right? We already know that. For example, he's lucky he can remember facts very easily, ability. Or when I was a child, I could speak Welsh, but now I've forgotten it completely, an ability in the past. That's clear. Now, um, let's go to the other um, 
part here. And let's continue says to talk about an achievement or something that was done with difficulty, we use was or were able to plus infinity, right? Uh, so uh, for example, we have here, she was able to memorize all the words before the test. Okay, so uh, that's also uh, for ability. We can also use was or were or able to express that someone was successful in doing something or at one on one occasion. Were you able to get this autograph after the concert? Okay, so uh, this is all for ability. So, so for now, I think that we are already uh, done or we are already, uh, we know exactly how it works for ability. Now let's go with permission, okay? Okay, for permission, can is often used to express permission. Can't is often used to express uh, pro prohibition, right? Prohibition in the present and in general time. Could and couldn't are used to express permission and prohibition in the past. So for example, you can say, you can leave whenever you want. Well, that's permission, right? They, they are giving you the option to leave. Or in the UK, children can leave school until they are 16. That's pro prohibition, right? So um, again, in the 1950s, children in the UK could leave school at 14. Permission. In the 1950s, in the UK, young adults couldn't vote until they were 21. Prohibition, right? So uh, these are the ways that we are using this, uh, in this case, permission using models and semi-models. May is sometimes used to express permission and provision in the present. It is more formal than can. So you can say members may not wear jeans or t-shirts at formal ceremonies, right? So uh, this is like a more uh, for permission, but in a very formal way, okay? Now let's go with request, suggestions, and polite orders. So we can say can and could are both used to make offers and requests and to give polite orders and suggestions. Can is informal, could is, is neutral, right? So for example, can and could I help you with that? I'm offering. Or can or could you test me on these words? That's a request. Or you can or could check the recipe and find the ingredients while I wash up. Polite orders or that will be also suggestion. Okay, so that's the way that we can use it. Also, might. Might is sometimes used to request permission, but only in very formal situations. For example, may, might I be allowed to give an opinion on this matter? Or might I suggest that we take a vote on this proposal? This is uh, if you are uh, in Congress or in a very, uh, uh, in a very formal meeting, then you can also use to ask uh, for um, for some permission, you can also use might. Okay, let's go with possibility and probability. Well, we can use may, might, or could are used to speculate about the present and future. Might indicates a lower probability or more uncertainty than may or could. Couldn't indicates almost total certainty, much greater than may not or might not. They, for example, we, we have here, they could decide to take the train. Well, that's something possible, right? Or she may get here on time if she catches the early train. That's also something possible. Or uh, she might get here on time if she catches the letter train, less probable. Or she couldn't arrive before 10, it's impossible, as certain, right? Uh, then using may, might, or could have plus past participle are used to speculate about the past. Uh, they're late. They may have been held up in the rush hour traffic. Or I left a message at their hotel, but they might not have got it yet. Or they could have met by coincidence in London. It's too big. Okay, so uh, all of this is uh, for possibility and probability. Okay. Now let's go to our next uh, picture here that we have. And uh, let's continue with um, probability. So it says, my, may, might, could, plus have, plus 
uh, past participle are used to talk about possibilities in the past that we didn't actually that sorry that we know didn't actually happen. Okay, the context uh, has to be examined to decide whether the structure has this meaning or whether it expresses a speculation about something that did actually happen. For example, uh, did you use a map? You might have got lost, right? So I'm just giving you a possibility that didn't happen, right? But you didn't. But I'm giving you that possibility. Uh, that happens a lot, right? Some people that really want for, uh, to tell us that they're right. Well, you did that, but it could have, that could happen. Well, yes, you're right, but it didn't, right? So uh, this also can, can uh, help us regarding this, the way of using these uh, models. Also, she was very intelligent and couldn't have gone to university, but she didn't, right? Uh, so that's something that is very interesting for us to know regarding models and sand models. Now, can't is used to express negative certainty about the present based on evidence. For example, this bill can be right. We've only had two copies, right? So there's an evidence, right? Because what is the evidence? Well, we just had two copies and this bill can be right, okay? So if you have the evidence on your hands, then also, uh, for expressing negative certainty, you can use can't. Uh, now, can't plus have plus past participle is used to express negative certainty about the past based on, based on evidence. Now we're talking about the past. For example, this doesn't taste right. They can have followed the recipe, okay? So why are you so, so, uh, maybe uh, certain that they didn't follow the recipe because it doesn't taste right, okay? But we're talking about uh, something that was based on the past, okay? Now, can or could are used to talk about theoretic, theoretical possibility. Could indicates less confidence than can. For example, you can say the school can take 1,000 pupils. It usually does. Or the school could take 1,000 pupils but it wouldn't be difficult in terms of space, okay? So um, that's the example that we have regarding can or could. Now, let's go to might, might, sorry, may, might, or could, plus be, plus verb, plus ing, are used to speculate about events and situations in the immediate present and in the future. For example, where's Sam? He might be studying, studying in his room, right? So again, it's something that um, it's in, in the right now, it, it's something in the present, right? Or in the future, for example, Fiona could be uh, managing her own company a year from now. Well, it's something that we're talking about the future. So uh, again, for, um, um, again, speculating things, right? We are, remember here, we are speculating things that somebody might be doing right now or somebody might be doing in some future. Now let's go with obligation. Obligation, of course, we have must or have to are used to say what you think is necessary or to recommend someone else to do something. For example, you say, you must remember to email Jelena, okay? Uh, or have to, not must, okay? Have to is used to say that what someone else has told you to do. The speaker is not giving their own opinion. I have to write 500 words for my project. This is something that people get confused a lot. When can I use must and when can I use have to? Again, uh, must is something like more, uh, I would say more personal, right? Uh, if uh, maybe, uh, your boss tells you, okay, you must do this uh, uh, class or you must uh, do this part. If you don't do it, well, the boss is going to know it right away. So that obligation is more like something more personal. But about what about have to? Again, uh, have to is something that, of course, is also an obligation, but it's not that personal. For example, if you are in college and the teacher tells everybody, okay, you guys, you have to arrive at 5 p.m. 
but maybe if you didn't arrive at 5 p.m., maybe the teacher wouldn't even notice it, right? Or uh, you have to uh, follow these directions, right? But it's just something more in general, and that's mostly the way to make a difference between must and have to, okay? Um, in these examples, yeah, they say I have to write 500 words for my project. So maybe uh, if that person doesn't write those 500 words, well, it's not like the teacher is going to get upset or the person, it's just something in general, some uh, instructions in general that it's an obligation, but uh, maybe it's not that personal as using must. Okay, let's go with necessity. Well, in this case, we use need to or don't need to plus infinitive are used to say what is necessary. For example, you say, you need to make three copies of this, or you needn't hurry. Uh, yes, you can use needn't, please uh, don't get confused with that. It's okay to use needn't. Now, didn't need to use to say that it wasn't necessary to do something, so you didn't. For example, I have here, I didn't need to go to the bank, so I didn't, right? Needn't have plus past participle used to say is used to say uh, you did something but it wasn't necessary. For example, I didn't have I didn't have gone to the bank. I went to the bank but it wasn't necessary. Okay. So uh, again, this type of sentences we are not very used to use this, but uh, it's very important for us to know that they, it's okay to say needn't have gone right. And in this in this case is when uh, something is not necessary. Okay, now um, that will be for the uh, the models and semi-model part. So let's go very quick to our uh, our booklet, and you can see here in, on page thirty where it says models and semi-models. So um, it says here models. Example could and similar models, example need to tell us something about the attitude of the speaker. In these sentences, the models are used for giving instructions and advice. What is the meaning behind each one? So please answer these questions. And also it says model part number two, model verbs can have other meanings. Match the model verbs below to the meaning from the box. Okay, so uh, you need to know if uh, in this case, we use in for ability or negative certainty or making an offer or instruction, permission, request, or theoretical possibility. So uh, please do this part and uh, also please do part three. And um, again, I'll be able to send you all these answers and you will be able to see or to check them in the platform because it's very important for you to check how you're doing. Also, um, it says here, part five says, model verbs can also be used to speculate about things. Look at the pictures and discuss what happened to the people, what they are doing or what they might have done. So uh, please check this out, make your own sentences. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can send me those sentences so that I can also check them. And to see, uh, again, try to use models to uh, speculate, okay? We just saw a little bit of that uh, in, the, in our grammar part, and please do it right now to, to see if we can uh, do that part, okay? Then uh, there's gonna be another listening part in this unit. Remember, again, uh, uh, it's very important, please, for you to practice listening because uh, sometimes the British accent can be a little bit complicated for us. So uh, please practice that so that you'll be able to, uh, once we, we practice then the direct parts of the test, then uh, will be easier for you, for you to practice. Okay, so uh, please do this listening part over here. And uh, for vocabulary, we have, remember, we just saw a little bit of how to use or how to do part three of the reading use of English based on suffixes and prefixes. And uh, on that, is that I want for you to base this vocabulary part for today. So it says match the prefixes, these, none, etc., with the words. Sometimes there is more than one possible answer. And once you do that here in part one, then do 
part two, which says complete these rules with IL, IM, or IR. Okay. And number three, match the words to the suffixes. Sometimes there is more than one possible answer and you may have to change the spelling. Okay. So uh, please practice this part and because it's going to be very, very important for part three of the reading and use of English test. Okay. So um, that will be it for today. I hope that uh, you will be able to, well, that you can, could understand a little bit more regarding models and semi-models and also using prefixes and suffixes for part three of the reading and use of English text. So uh, again, thank you very much for choosing us. Remember, if you have any question, just uh, send us a message, uh, a text, text us, and we will be more than glad to help you. Thank you very much.